Hello, today we're gonna get ready together and I'm gonna answer your juicy questions that you left me over on Instagram. Okay, I asked you guys to leave me some juicy ones and you did not disappoint. So let's just jump right in. Everything's gonna be linked down below. Let's get started. Okay, my face is very dry right now. I'm actually debating if I should skip foundation. I know you're probably looking at it. It doesn't look dry, okay? But it's been peeling a lot lately and I just, I'm, if I put foundation on, is it going to peel? I am, I'm, this is always the tough part because I'm like, sometimes primer causes, that was, that was this, not me. Sometimes primer causes some pilling. So I don't know. Sometimes multiple layers almost makes things worse when my skin is not on its best behavior, but whatever. We'll try it. This is my favorite. This is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Primer. It is the only thing getting me through the winter. You guys have so many dating questions, which we'll definitely do like a whole segment on because I have a lot to answer there. But I first want to talk about this because I've been needing to do a video about this. So it seemed like a good time to at least open the conversation. I was asked with the shakeup with the cruelty. Wait, I can't even read with shakeup with cruelty free status of so many brands. I think her question must have been in two parts. You know, when you ask something on Instagram and it will, like, you only have so many characters to use. I think this was a two-part thing. So I'm, I'm being asked about what's going on with my cruelty-free status. And you guys, there is a lot going on in the cruelty-free space right now. And my original plan actually was to do a video about this. And I had fully, like, prepped the video, done my notes for it. And that was originally going to be Monday's video. And I, I've i decided I want to wait to post it because I'm still kind of gathering my thoughts. And this has always been tough because it's such a nuanced conversation that I think we so often boil down to something that should be black or white, but it's just not. Like there's so much gray area. And in terms of animal testing policies, there recently has been a lot of new information made available that in some ways you would think would make things more clear but as a cruelty-free consumer i'm actually just left with more questions and like i said i had initially done the outline already for a video because i wanted to update you guys on what's happening in the cruelty-free space but it it became obvious to me that I still don't have all the answers myself and I want to take some time to just figure out what I think. And I know that's not the best answer. I'm sure you want something more definitive, but I'm confused. Like, that's it. And this is something I've honestly been feeling for a few years now and I know that so many people look at me as a cruelty-free resource, so I try to be very cautious with anything that I share because I never want to spread misinformation in terms of the laws and how they impact animal testing. Basically, you might I probably did not explain this very well at all. You're like, girl, what are you even talking about? So if you follow Cruelty Free Kitty, she posted earlier this year that a lot of brands that previously were not on her cruelty-free list will now be on the list based on some changes in animal testing laws. Leaping Bunny doesn't necessarily agree with that list. And what I always find and have found challenging as a cruelty-free consumer is that you tend to get a different answer depending on who you ask. And it's hard to find definitive answers to anything, which makes it challenging to form your own opinions. I'm going to leave a video from my friend Sarah Rose linked down below. She actually did two videos about this recently that I thought were very well done. I think she did a wonderful job verbalizing a lot of thoughts that I have been grappling with for a while now. So I'm going to leave her video linked down below and I'm going to leave this question a little bit open and eventually come back to you guys once my mind settles a bit. Okay, the foundation was Tarte Shape Tape Cloud. You know, I love this one. The concealer was, actually this is discontinued, but it's NYX Born to Glow. It's in my project pan. 
And now we're going to use a little bit of Fenty um, Match Stick, but I don't like applying this to my face. I like to take a brush. So this is from BK Beauty. This, you guys, I'm so excited. These new extension brushes that I've talked about, I talked about last year when they came out, I reviewed them. These were like different versions of some of their popular ones, like mini versions, and it was like an extension to the line. But they originally were only available in the set which is kind of lame because who wants to buy every single, like a full set, that's expensive. No one wants to buy all those. I mean, some people do, don't get me wrong. But if you just wanted one brush, you couldn't buy them until now they just made them available as individual brushes. So this one is the 112. It's like a really nice, tiny um, blush brush type of product. So we're gonna use this. One question that made me laugh was, does Tilly know when you're filming? Tilly's right there laying on my bed. She does know and she sometimes it, it depends sometimes she leaves sometimes she's like okay i don't want to deal with this and she'll get up and leave like i'm not kidding especially when i would film on the bed the second i would sit down she would get up and walk to the door and then look at me until i would open the door to let her out but sometimes like right now for example she doesn't mind she's just sleeping she has this one blanket that i got recently that she's pretty obsessed with no matter what i do with this blanket like wherever i put it tilly will be when my mom was here my mom was using this blanket while we were sitting on the couch watching tv and tilly was getting not angry but i could tell she wanted the blanket she was just looking at her like that is my blanket and then my mom would give it to her and Tilly would lay on it. Like, if you want Tilly to be near you, you just put this blanket next to you because she will come to the blanket. I was asked some of my personal focuses for 2023 outside of YouTube and makeup. And I thought this was interesting because this is something I have observed about myself that I tend to be so focused on my career that when I'm making my goals and even resolutions at the start of a new year or anytime I'm goal setting, so many of the ones I'm creating are focused on YouTube and social media and how I want to grow my channel or improve my videos. And I noticed that this year when I was setting out some goals for myself, I was like, you are so focused on work and you have a life outside of work. So I was trying to be intentional about also setting goals in my personal life outside of just my career. So a few that I set this year, first of all, I am trying to do 10,000 steps a day, which I used to be really good about doing when I first moved to New York, but I haven't been as good lately and it's also hard in the winter, but I'm trying to get back into that because I feel so much better when I'm consistently walking that much. And I guess it's less about the actual number of 10,000, but that at least gives me something measurable to focus on. But when I am active and I'm walking and I'm out and about, I notice such a significant difference in my mental health, in my mood, it, it's, it's great. I love walking, I've always loved walking, and I wanna do more of that. I also want to be more involved in my community this year, whether that means joining some different groups, doing more volunteering. That's a really big priority for me in 2023. I'm also trying to just buy and consume less, even outside of makeup, like just in my personal life. I'm doing a no buy on clothing in January, which has been tough, but nice. I mean, it's not that tough, it's only a month, but that's another goal that I have this year. Do you want or have tattoos? I feel like I get this one a lot and I don't have any tattoos. And as of now, I don't want any tattoos. I love tattoos on other people, my friends that have tattoos. I think they're so beautiful. I think they're really cool. There were a lot of times in my life that I wanted a tattoo and there were a lot of tattoos that I contemplated getting. Even to the point like on my 26th birthday, I'm 29 now. That's when I was working more so in events and I was in um arizona we're phoenix we were in phoenix or scottsdale and while we were there i was like i'm getting a tattoo while we're here i really wanted to get a tattoo because i was having my birthday then and i was like this is the time and i was like trying to decide what i was going to get and ultimately i decided against getting that and instead i got my second lobes pierced because i was like i gotta do something i'm either getting a tattoo or a piercing so i just got my second lobes pierced which 
this side has closed up. I kind of want to get them redone, but I never got that tattoo. And even the tattoos over the years that I had considered getting that I wanted for a while, I now look back and I'm glad that I didn't get them. That being said, I think had I gotten them, I wouldn't necessarily regret them, but I look back and I'm like, mm, maybe I didn't need that. So it's just tough because there's nothing that I feel that strongly that I want to have on my body forever. So then I'm like, why am I, am I just getting it to get it? And then I'm like, if I'm doing that, there's no point in me having one, but I do love, I think tattoos are beautiful. My friends with tattoos, I think they're so cool and special. I just don't have any and I've gotten to the point where I've decided I don't think they're for me. Ooh, have you met a YouTuber that was actually not nice at all in real life? Whenever I do any sort of Q&A, you guys are always like, what brands are horrible? What YouTubers are mean? And sometimes there's just not that much tea, to be honest. I I wouldn't say I've met any YouTubers where I'm like, wow, you're, you're really not nice. Like, you're really mean. Uh, that hasn't been my experience. That's not to say they don't exist, but that's just not anything I have personally observed observed happen. I will say though, I, I, I'm fortunate enough to go to a good amount of brand events now that I live in New York City. When I was living in Michigan, I definitely wasn't going to any brand events because there really aren't any in Michigan, but now in New York, it's something I'm fortunate enough to do somewhat consistently. And at these events, there really aren't YouTubers. So to answer this question, there's there's almost never YouTubers at this event. Whenever I'm talking to creators, they usually mainly do TikTok, at least in terms of the ones that I'm interacting with. Uh, they mostly do TikTok, some do Instagram. But then when I say I do YouTube, it's always like, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to start YouTube or like, tell me about YouTube. Like most creators that are at these events, mostly do TikTok. And also at these events, a lot of times, depending on the event and the brand, it's actually kind of split 50-50 with creators, influencers, and then press. So writers, people that work for magazines, or even if they don't work for magazines, people that freelance, people that write in general. Okay, but I'm like getting off on a tangent. You want the juicy stuff. Have I met people that aren't nice? I've definitely met people that have maybe given me the impression they're not the nicest, especially I have met some TikTokers that are very, very big and they've maybe appeared standoffish or unkind, but I also try not to read too much into a very small interaction with someone. I know so many people can struggle with social anxiety. Some people, you just, you have RBF or R. Yeah, that, those, those, that's the acronym. Like, I don't know someone well enough to judge a small interaction with them, you know? That being said, there definitely are times when I can recognize that this person might be wonderful, but we just simply don't have personalities that naturally mesh well. And it's not that they're a bad person, it's just that I vibe with people that are a bit different. And that's just life. So... No like majorly horrible experiences yet. Maybe one day, I'll let you guys know. Okay, you guys asked, why did your most recent relationship not work out? Do you have plans to start dating again soon? So I talked about this. I believe I mostly updated you guys on this in my 2022 end of the year video with some life updates. So I can leave that link down below. But throughout most of 2022, I was seeing someone pretty seriously and just him, just exclusively. And we ended things in November and I'm not dating now. I don't have plans really to date anytime too soon, but why did it end? That's the question. I've had a lot of questions like similar to that. And honestly, you guys, I was also getting some questions like, was he toxic or like, what was the problem? I really don't have anything negative to say about him. He is a wonderful human. We had such a great time together. I had so much fun with him. 
And I really look at it like, this is cheesy, but let's stick with me. You know the Ariana Grande song, Thank You Next? Like I said, stick with me. But where in the beginning, she talks about all of her exes and what she learned from their relationship. And she explains kind of how you grow a little bit with everyone that you date. And that's how I look at our relationship. Like I feel like our relationship was really important for me to raise my standards dating after him. And I mean that as like the highest compliment to him because he was the first man that I've dated that made me realize that what I was asking for before and what I was looking for was not too much to ask for. Was such a kind partner, such a patient partner. I always felt appreciated. I always felt loved. I always felt spoiled, whether that was through flowers and surprises or just his actions, his words. Like he truly was such a wonderful partner. And so now you're like, okay, well girl, why did you guys break up? And there's really not much of a story there. It's just that someone can be wonderful and that doesn't necessarily make them wonderful for you compatibility is deeper than just someone being a good partner or not and we were kind of seeing that in a lot of ways we weren't as good of a match as we hoped that we were and we ended things on good terms and that was that um so i'm also i've been asked like any new love interests are you going to date again um, right now, I've been saying that I am just dating myself. I am taking myself on literal dates, taking myself places that I want to go. Even the other night, I went to see a Broadway show that I've been wanting to see. Um, my friends aren't huge like Broadway people, at least not my friends that live in New York. So I went by myself. I just took myself on a date to a show I wanted to see. I had to see A Strange Loop before it closed. I'm so happy that I saw it, you guys. It was truly, truly, truly one of my favorite Broadway shows I've ever seen, like top two probably, it was incredible. And right now I am just not necessarily focused on dating anyone. I really been prioritizing my friendships. I was asked my worst date experience and there was one and it's not even, okay. He, it wasn't that bad. It's not, I've never had a date experience that was so bad where they like said something rude to me or were rude to the server, like nothing like that where it's so extreme that you're going to like drop your jaw. But the date that comes to mind was one that happened um, like last year, like winter, you know, like, like spring, winter, like really, really early in the year. And I was on a date with this guy and i feel like a lot of times you can kind of tell pretty quickly on if you guys are going to vibe and then it's tough sometimes because i don't necessarily want to be like mm, i can tell right away there's not gonna be a second date let's go home i mean i'm sure i could say that but i want to both enjoy ourselves you know so i was trying to make the most of it we were having a good time, you know, there's nothing wrong. I just could tell we maybe weren't the right match. And so after about an hour, we just were getting drinks. We were at this like wine bar, we're sitting at the bar. I had finished my glass of wine. And then at this point, it was like an hour. I was kind of ready to, you know, fade out. I was ready to go, like slowly wrap it up. And I was kind of saying some hints to my date that would suggest I was about ready to go. You know, the like, so how are you getting home from here? Are you taking the train or are you like things that I thought would make it obvious without me explicitly saying, hey, I would like to leave now, which in hindsight, this was just like a lesson that I had to learn the hard way. In hindsight, I should have just said like, okay, let's let's go. I'm done, but I didn't. And so I was trying to be subtle and just suggest it. And then after my drink was done, the bartender came over and was like, would you like another one? And I was like, no thanks, I think I'm all set. Thinking that that might also give him the cue. 
It didn't, so then he didn't order another drink. But then we got waters, and then we were sitting at the bar, you guys, for like hours longer just with our waters. And I felt like I kept saying all the things to wrap it up. I was like, so what are your plans tomorrow? Do you have to get up early? To the point that I was starting to say like, okay, well, I should probably get going. And he's like, are you in a hurry? And I was like, no, but I'm probably gonna go soon. And then it, would, it just kept going. And again, I needed to have better boundaries to just cut it off then, but I didn't. And it just went on far too long and I was uncomfortable. And I felt like first I was giving hints that I was ready to go and he wasn't picking up on them. And then I was explicitly saying like, okay, well, I should probably go. And I still didn't feel like he was picking up on it. And then when we were leaving, it was pouring rain and I didn't have my umbrella, but I lived nearby. And he was like, do you want me to walk you home? And again, maybe I should not have had him walk me home because I didn't want to see this guy again. I didn't necessarily want him to know where I live, but it was also pouring rain. So I was like, okay. And then we're sharing an umbrella. You have to stand close together. Like it just was awkward. Okay. And then the worst part of all of this, well, after the date, I, I let him know. I was like, you know, I don't see it. And he was like, did I misinterpret the signs? And I was like, what signs? I kept saying, I, was, I, I thought I was making it clear. Maybe I wasn't, maybe I need to make it more clear. The worst part of this whole thing is that now that I have moved, he lives in the neighborhood that I moved to when I moved in the summer and I regularly run into him a lot of times at Trader Joe's, which I, I never run into anyone I know anywhere except for this guy. Someone asked me Michigan weather or New York City weather. And I specifically say New York City versus New York because the weather upstate is pretty different than it is in the city. But honestly, it's not that different. I would say on average, New York tends to be like around 10 degrees warmer than where I'm from in Michigan, at least. Like it, it depends where in Michigan you are, but the weather is similar, except it's a little bit more mild here. However, it feels more extreme to me in New York because I spend so much more time outside because my main mode of transportation is walking. So when it is 20 degrees in Michigan, which I can put the Celsius equivalent on the screen, I think that would be like negative. I don't know. I don't know. I was going to say three, but I don't know if that's right. When it's about 20 in Michigan, like that's kind of cold, but it's like, meh, whatever. You're going to walk from your warm house into your warm car, out of your warm car, into your warm store, work, location, wherever you're going. So the time spent outside in that very cold temperature is not that much versus in New York, like 20 degrees seems so much colder because I will be outside for at least an hour or a few hours every day. Maybe not a few hours every day, but you know what I mean. I was also asked if I miss driving. No, when I was in DC last weekend, I was visiting my friend and she picked me up in her car. I like I took the I took the bus from New York to DC and she picked me up in her car and um, we were talking about that too and I was like, "No, I actually don't miss driving at all because I never liked driving. I get so scared driving, you guys. I don't know. I have such bad driving anxiety that I love that I never drive anymore. I don't really ever want to drive again. It, sometimes when I go back to Michigan and I drive I like it. I enjoy driving on like back roads. Like I'm from a small town. So it's one thing to drive there. That's not bad. But like when I lived in Detroit, driving there or even driving like in the suburbs in Michigan, what would make me so scared? Oh my gosh, I don't like driving. I did put um, Oyster Pearl on my lid, but I kind of want to put oops a little bit of this on top. This is the Natasha Nona Mini Biba Pals. I've just been using the brown to do like a little wing, but let's do a tiny bit of the sparkle and just i'm just gonna tap it on like i don't want much just some sparkles Ooh, another one again like i said i always get questions about like where what are the shady things someone asked me the shadiest thing a brand has ever done and i just remembered i forgot blush so let's do blush this is burt's bees shy pink i 
there hasn't been anything again it's there's nothing that's like shady that I've had happen to me personally where like I've never had a brand ask me to lie or ask me to do something I'm not comfortable doing but like I have had brands offer just like a really bad deal like if we send you this product, will you basically do a sponsored video on it? Or like, or they'll offer me a rate that is like far below industry standards. But I don't think of that as like a shady thing, more so just like a bad proposition that I have declined. Okay, I just touched up my eyebrows a little bit more. I'm not obsessed with them, but that's okay. We have those days. For lips, this is not the lip liner I meant to grab, but I guess, oh no, let's do this. This is Persona Almond, which I didn't like these when they first came out, but lately I've been wearing this shade a lot. So let's do a little bit of almond. And I have a little bit of a stain left behind because I was wearing a lip stain from e.l.f. I bought the shade Pinkies Up, which is like a nude. And I tried that earlier and it did leave a bit of a stain. Not as nude toned as I wanted, though. It's like more warm than, or not warm, but more red than I was hoping, but it did kind of stain. So now let me take a little bit of this. This is NYX Nutmeg. It's like a, a brown, like a medium brown. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of this, a little bit. And then let's use this again, the e.l.f. Um, lip stain. Like I said, this is pinkies up. It looks, it's more nude when you first apply it, but then after a bit, it turns more pink. So the color kind of changes. Okay, there we go. I had so much fun answering your juicy questions. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.